Welcome to Adapting Class. The repetitiveness in is very important aspect of your test. It falls under risk reduction, reduction of risk potential. So this is the key. So you want to know how to prevent injury to the patient after surgery or before they go to surgery. So some quick questions, test your mind, test taking strategy, content mastery, and close question, and some review associated with that. So let's um, get to it. Um, the first question, of course, uh, you, uh, it has to be prioritization. You have to prioritize what is going on with the patient. So which client should the nurse assess first after receiving the following post-operative shift report? After the nurse come in and the patient, all of them on surgery and receive the report, who is the nurse going to see? Prioritization 101, you have to be sharp. Divide it into two. Figure out what is going on with the individual and what is the concerning features they want you to know. It's called buzzword. This patient has pain, 7 out of 10. From what? It's due for medication, 15 minutes. You want to give him his medication? He has pain, 7 out of 10. What do you think? You got to be sharp. A patient with the temperature, 101.5. What is the problem? And prolonged wound drainage. Is this sepsis? Think about it. Connect it together. That's be sharp, right? You got to be flexible as you walk through. You're telling yourself, okay, and so what? What is the most important one? A client who is what drowsy but arouses to verbal stimuli after receiving anesthesia. What is the problem? I'm drowsy because I get anesthesia, but what is the problem? If you stimulate me, I will wake up. Then the next one, your blood pressure is what 50 over uh, 90 over 50 and a heart rate of that. You have to be sharp. What do you think? Is there a breathing issue here? I don't see your breathing. Is there any electrolyte issue here? Yeah, I don't see that. Is there any shock patient here? Yeah, I see a shock patient, right? Blood pressure of 90 over 50 and heart rate of 120 is a shock. Is he a sepsis patient here? Yeah, yeah, I have a fever and then a um, permanent drainage, right? Is he a um, airway problem here? Yeah, Probably, but not completely, because this patient is drowsy. Neurologically, he's not there, but he will wake up when you stimulate him. So probably he's protecting his airway. Is he a neurological one? Yeah, drowsiness, but stimulate. when you stimulate them, they wake up. Is there a pain issue? Is this pain is going to lose your life, limb, eyesight? No, it's just a regular pain. Therefore, this pain, 7 out of 10, I have time with you. Temperature 101.5. One it's not sepsis. Drowsiness, you, we can wake you up. But this patient is more dangerous. We got to take care of that patient. This is shock right here. So who do we see? We see normal four. That's how you answer these kind of questions. It's just test taking strategy. Okay? So tachycardia hypotension is shock. And this is teaching a client post-op post care following cholecystectomy. Read the question from the above. Which statement by the client indicate a need for further teaching? And this is what? Teaching a client post-op care following cholecystectomy. He had a cholecystectomy. It should be laparoscopic cholecystectomy, right? This is done laparoscopically. I should avoid lifting anything heavier than 10 pounds for six weeks. That is true. You shouldn't lift any heavy lifting. I will remove the dressing daily to let the wound head out. There's no more. We don't do this with the big dressing anymore. We put some uh, glue. We call it demobone. So when you go home, there's no dressing to be removed. I will eat a low-fat diet to avoid complication. Yes, you should have well. You should eat low-fat diet because we remove the gallbladder, which is responsible for holding on to bar, giving into the GI tract, and whenever you need it, we release it like fatty food. Now you don't have it. You don't have a reservoir, so you want to stay out of uh, away from fatty food. I should call the doctor if I notice redness or drainage from the incision infection. So you should call me. You don't need to remove any dressing. There will be no dressing there. What is the next priority intervention? A client in the PACU you as with what? Restlessness, tachycardia, and an increase in temperature. Connect the dot. Restlessness. So patient just had surgery. Whenever they tell you, I'm in the PACU you post anesthesia care unit, and I have was restlessness, I have tachycardia, my temperature is up. Connect the dot. Surgery. And you restless, you have restlessness, your heart rate is high, 
and your temperature is high, I call them buzzwords, connect the dot. This is malignant epithemia. If it's malignant epithemia, we got to treat you quickly. Giving you something to bring your temperature down is not the answer for it. Giving you fluid is not the answer. I need to do all of them, but that's not the priority. I should let the surgeon know so that we can come in and give you dantoline or something like that to help with that. Oxygen, we will give it to you, but this is not the first thing. I'm not treating this because this is an emergency. So the nurse should take this as an emergency and treat it quickly and let the surgeon know as soon as possible. So this is your right answer. The uh, C is the right answer. So the nurse should let the doctor know as soon as possible. This is the two-year-old client with the temperature and diabetes, a type two diabetes, hypertension, chronic kidney diseases, scheduled for surgery. You are stretch setting labs, right? His creatinine is three point one, right? It's abnormal. It's kidney problem. Potassium five point eight. It's abnormal. It's too a little bit high. And the hemoglobin of nine point five. What is the nurse priority action? Think about it. Patient has diabetes, hypertension, kidney disease, and these are the lab work that you have. What should you do? Let the surgeon know and proceed with the surgery. Administer IV fluid before the surgery to help with the electrolyte. Inform anesthesia team of the patient in, uh, uh, imbalances and continue preparing the client as these values are typical of what? Um, of chronic kidney disease, of course. But what is going to kill the patient? Anesthesia. We give this patient anesthesia and if potassium go, continue to go up, it's a problem. So the person who is the most important person in the team who is going to put this patient to sleep is anesthesia, not the surgeon. So we should let anesthesia know. A client with the history of selfish allergy is scheduled for a CT scan with IV contrast. What should the nurse do? The concept here is, if you have shellfish allergy, it should not affect, nowadays it doesn't affect contrast allergy. But I said this question to trap you. If you have shellfish allergy, nowadays it should not affect contrast allergy. But it doesn't mean you should ignore what they put as an answer. Look at the answer choice. Cancel the test due to the shellfish allergy. You should not do that. Confirm the patient has not had prior reaction to contrast. So you got to make sure even though we don't do any, we don't stop the surgery from contrast allergy or the CT scan from contrast allergy, you got to make sure that she's had a CT scan and even though she has shellfish allergy, there was no reaction. Administer preoperative steroid to prevent allergic reaction. It's good, right? You can administer it to prevent reaction. But like I said, there is no more reaction anymore these days people with a shellfish allergy can still get a ct but how would you know you got to figure out if they've reacted to that before right at the same time we don't do that anymore we know there's no actual reaction ensure the uh, contrast solution is iodine free it's good once again we want to make sure the first thing the nurse should do is to find out from the patient have you had you can do all these things if you don't know he had had reaction to CT scan, uh, CT scan contrast, it's a problem. So this is a test kings kind of strategy. All the answers are okay, but you got to look at the question, what he's saying. Confirm that the patient has not had prior reaction to contrast, right? Shell physiology does not correlate with increased risk of uh, reaction to IV contrast. However, history of prior that we do that. So you got to look for it. That's the buzzword in the question. What is the nurse best response? A nurse is preparing a client for surgery and the patient state, I'm sh not sure I understand why I need surgery. Oh, well, you can tell her what you know, the patient what you know, but when it comes to the technical aspect of the surgery and everything, the reason you got to go to the doctor. The surgery is necessary to improve your condition. How do you know? I will notify the surgeon to explain the procedure again. Let me review the procedure with you in detail. You're not supposed to do that. It is important to allow the surgeon's advice to get better. What is not good? He said he doesn't know why he's having surgery. There's a reason why he was scheduled. There's a reason why he's in the preoperative area. 
the only person who is very facetal about this is the surgeon who would explain the thing to the patient. The client is scheduled for surgery as a potassium of 6.2. What is the next priority action? I said this to tell you that sometimes in the board exams, they will give you obvious, like something bad, like, and it's not a trap. And don't freak out. Don't say, whoa, they're trying to uh, trap me. Potassium is 6.2. What you should do? Real life. Don't say, this is easy question, so I will be overthink it. Potassium is 6.2. That's what the question says. You go and take the test and you see this kind of question, then you overthink it. 6.2 is bad. So pick an answer that will prevent risks, right? Risk reduction. These are questions about risk reduction. Not notify the surgeon and anticipate the delay of the surgery. Most likely, continue preparing the patient and monitor their cardiac rhythm. I don't think so. Ed Educate the patient about the risks of hyperkalemia. He does not care about it. He's going to have surgery. Education is not going to prevent complication in this situation. Ensure the patient receives potassium supplement before surgery. It's potassium in 6.2. You see? So I made the answer choice so obvious that you got to call the surgeon. Which statement by the patient indicates they understand the instruction? A nurse is teaching a client about deep breathing exercise before surgery. Which one indicate that he understand it? I will hold my breath for 30 seconds before exhaling. I will exhale forcefully through my mouth to clear my lung. Yeah, my mouth. I should use the incentive spirometer 10 times every hour while awake. I will avoid using the incentive spirometer if I feel short of breath. This is, I said it to show you something that when you select the answers you have no idea what you should do there's two answers that have incentive spirometer that tell you one and two is wrong if the two have it which one sound good one said i avoid the other one said i will use it 10 times an hour hey i'm picking you that's the way you can help with a test taking strategy sometimes these questions this question is designed to tell the perioperative questions are like that but you have to like be straightforward and don't overthink it. What is the next first action? What is the first thing she should do? The client is recovering from surgery. Report feeling what? Lighted and dizzy upon standing up. You get up and then boom, you feel dizzy, you feel it's lighted in it, right? What is the problem? It's orthostatic. What do you want to do? Just put him down, let him recover. Encourage the patient to take deep breath. Dizziness has nothing to do with your lung. Assist the patient back to the supine position. Yeah, let him lay down. Check the patient's blood pressure and heart rate. After you lay down, then assess you. Notify the air care provider of the symptoms after you've taken care of the patient. So, this one. The 45-year-old client is scheduled for elective cholecystectomy expressed concern about the procedure, stating they have not been given more information the nurse receive, inf, re, reviews the informed consent form with the client by the patient still seems uncertain. What is the nurse's best action? Just call the doctor, right? Reassure the patient that the surgeon will explain everything during the procedure. No, he will be asleep during the procedure. Ask the patient to sign the consent form and ensure with them that they, everything will be fine. No, I don't. you can't reassure them. He still does not understand. Go call the doctor. Notify the surgeon immediately to address the patient's concern and ensure understanding. Tell the patient they can ask the surgeon question after surgery. Informed consent means you have to understand the surgery before you have it done. So that's informed consent. This is the end of it. Thank you for joining us. And this is my on demand. And this is what it looked like with the question bank. You get his eye, uh, you give you a score. You click analysis and here, and he has explanation of the questions and the answers, and you can review. Take care of yourself and good luck. Best of luck.